It's the perfect criminal commodity. You're looking at the theft of something that's needed by the majority of the population. How did you get rid of the fuel that you stole? Sold it on the streets. A huge number of motorists are being tempted. They're selling that for less than 90 pence a litre. If you can get it cheap, then you are prepared to almost do anything to get hold of it. And that means breaking the law. I'm not a silly and I've, I've got a job to do. The profits lining the pockets of organised crime. Well, the people at the top of this are the terrorists of yesteryear who would like to be the oil barons of tomorrow. Tonight, Panorama investigates Open up. the hidden cost of high fuel prices. What we put in our tanks is the very lifeblood of the British economy. But fuel prices here are now amongst the highest in Europe, making our petrol and diesel more valuable than ever. But the rising cost of this commodity has put it at the heart of a massive black market. Tonight, with exclusive access to those who are tackling it head on, will expose the multi-million pound hidden crime which stretches from the ordinary drivers at the garage forecourt through to a dark and a dangerous underworld. A Manchester petrol station. This footage shows a motorist filling up the tank of his white car. He's about to take part in a crime which is costing the UK tens of millions. He's one of the country's most prolific fuel thieves. He went to a rental company and hired a vehicle under his own name. What he'd then do is he would target similar vehicles to those that he'd rented. He'd find a vehicle, steal a number plate from that car and then stick that number plate onto the vehicle that he's hired. He'd pull up at a pump, totally separate area to where he'd taken the number plates from and then steal large amounts of fuel, hundreds of pounds in some cases. Uh, he would often have canisters in the back of the car that he would uh, fill up whilst he was at the pumps. It was quite brazen in terms of what he was doing. Strangeways Prison, Manchester. Now home for the next 10 months to the fuel thief detective inspector Turner and his colleagues had spent so long tracking down. How did you get rid of the fuel that you stole? Sold it. Sold it on the streets. Young kids would get on it, what he was doing, and wave at you and laugh. Other people would get on it and they'd smile, you know, so... What'd you take out of that? The crime would net reekier thousands. He saw it as easy money. I know it's, it's criminal, but it was simple criminal, if you know what I mean. But, um, yeah, there's nothing complicated about it now. Rikia's case is far from a one-off. This is CCTV footage of other drive-offs from around the country. According to those who monitor forecourt losses across the UK, 15 million pounds worth of fuel was stolen in this way last year. Not every region is seeing an increase in fuel crime, but some police forces, like Thames Valley, are seeing significant rises. There are certain petrol stations where the repeat there are literally running into the hundreds. Now, if you extrapolate that into the force and nationally, you're talking hundreds of thousands of crime and I still believe that that crime type of crime is underreported by the actual petrol companies. In Superintendent Huala's force, four court drive-offs now account for a third of his car related crime. When we do interview people, we arrest them and interview them, we ask why and basically the feedback is that there's a big market for fuel, there's a huge market for fuel. The trade body, BOSS, which represents petrol stations, said they're working closely with the enforcement agencies to reduce forecourt drive-offs. And there's now a new electronic system to report these kind of crimes more effectively. Forecourt drive-offs are a crude and simplistic way of stealing fuel for the ordinary motorist who wants a free tankful. Now, in the last two years, the cost of petrol and diesel has risen by around a third, and 60% of the price that we pay at the pump 
is tax. Such are the profits to be had from avoiding this duty that there now exists a whole new level of organised crime. It's early morning in Chelmsford, Essex, and a team of Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs officers are being briefed. We believe that one of the um, units where you're going, there's a DAF tractor unit across the entrance. I've been allowed access to this specialist team of fuel fraud investigators. We have to protect some of their identities for security reasons. If there's any nonsense from anybody, uh, and I'm talking about obstruction and all the rest of it, they get arrested. Okay, simple as that. Good luck. Today's operation is a raid on a business they believe is using illegal fuel. They'll be looking for red diesel, a subsidized or rebated fuel which farmers and building contractors are legally allowed to use for off-road vehicles like tractors and diggers. We're about to enter the target premises which is on the left. A team of officers goes on ahead to secure the yard. The liquid they'll be looking for is dyed a distinctive cherry red colour to distinguish it from legal road fuel. Hello. All oh, right. What's in there? Right, let me have a look. It's against the law for anyone to use red diesel on the road because it means the taxman isn't being paid. Hello. Who's that? The owner of the tankers is contacted. I'm Stuart Cruikshank from HM Revenue and Customs. Well, unfortunately, we, we can't wait. Um, I have a, a, a writ of assistance here, which is a, an authority to enter premises, if necessary, by force. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm, not, I'm not a silly p and I've, I've got a job to do, OK? With time against them, the team move in. Inside, the officers set to work dipping for fuel samples from every vehicle in the yard. The officers find what they came looking for. This should not be running on red. No, uh, this is a, a fully taxed road vehicle. You'll notice that the, the vehicle is actually taxed for the road and it's an offence irrespective of where the vehicle is on the road or off the road. It's not just red diesel which this company is illegally profiting from. I think this is an aviation fuel. Aviation fuel? Yes. And you can run aviation fuel in your car or your truck? You would do serious damage to your vehicle. Right. Well, we found a tanker, a blue tanker full of uh, contaminated fuel with red diesel which uh, we've seized, uh, two uh, heavy goods vehicles which were driving on red diesel, another large transit van there uh, which is also on red and they've been seized. There's another tanker over there which looks like it's got rocket fuel which we have to have tested properly but it's an illegal substance. So a lot of fuel here that shouldn't be here and uh, businesses obviously running on uh, cheap diesel. But for many businesses Illegally avoiding fuel tax increasingly seems the lesser of two evils, when the alternative may be going under. Three quarters of companies in the transport industry, who instructed insolvency firms, now cite the cost of fuel as the main reason for closure. Others are selling up. Jim Dodd is a case in point. He ran his family's haulage firm in Maidstone for more than 30 years. He was faced with rising fuel costs in the UK and, as we have the most heavily taxed fuel in the EU, he also found himself up against competition from his rivals, operating on cheaper fuel from the continent. It's like having a boxing match with one arm tied behind my back. I have to have two hands to do my job, I only have one. And that's why I sold my hundred year old family business. Because you felt you couldn't compete, it wasn't fair? It wasn't fair. It isn't fair. It isn't fair to people still doing the job. 
And when I look at hauliers that I know, all own family companies, they say, Doddy, how did you sell that? How did you get someone to buy it? Can you give the man my number? Because I'll sell out tomorrow. And I'm on about big, big privately owned haulage industry. And you put this down to the cost of fuel? Exactly the cost of fuel. So who's responsible for that cost? The trade body which represents the main oil refineries which supply the UK says it's not the oil companies. We take in the UK right the way through the supply chain, through the retailer, is extraordinary good value. Relative to Europe, we provide consistently the cheapest pre-tax petrol and diesel product in Europe. Uh, but once you put on uh, duty and VAT, that's very much a different matter. So you can see the bulk of that is really uh, going to the government. Around 60% of the price at the pump is tax. We asked the Treasury for an interview, but they declined. In a statement, they told us the price of fuel is determined by a range of factors, and the retail price is ultimately a commercial decision. They said the estimated illicit market share for diesel in Britain has been reduced from 10% of the market to 4% over seven years. And as part of a £1.9 billion package to ease the burden on motorists, they've introduced a range of measures which means petrol is six pence a litre cheaper than it otherwise would have been. This is Brooklands, the site of the world's first racing circuit, purpose-built when the price of fuel just didn't come into it. One man is now the public face of the Fair Fuel UK campaign, battling for cheaper fuel for all. You're not going to get much to the gallon driving like that. You'd be surprised. I've got it on eco mode. Quentin Wilson believes the high price at the pump is now skewing society's moral compass. The fact that people are stealing fuel says two things, doesn't it? It says it's become a completely different commodity to what it was two or three years ago. And secondly, it's far too expensive and far too valuable now to be good and, and, and law-abiding and go bankrupt, or to steal fuel, and I'm not for a minute condoning that, but to be in such a situation, you have to say, I've got to steal fuel to keep my business going because it's been taxed too much. So if you can get it cheap, then you are prepared to almost do anything to get hold of it. But just how far would ordinary people go to get their fuel on the cheap? Belfast, Northern Ireland. The famous street murals depict a long and bloody political struggle. Those who develop the criminal practices used to fund this are now focusing their attention on fuel crime. And in the pursuit of profit, old enemies have come together. One former member of the Northern Ireland Affairs Committee has also spent years monitoring organized crime and paramilitary activity in the province. The type of people that, that are probably involved at the top of this are the terrorists of yesteryear who would like to be the oil barons of tomorrow. The advantage of tens of millions of pounds quite often will outweigh any parochial differences that they may, held, they may have held in the past. Does it surprise you? No, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me. Um, when you get into a sort of a post-conflict era, and people are looking for other illegal activities, they don't last, uh, they, they, they simply don't allow past prejudices to get in the way of a nice profit. In order to safeguard that profit and avoid detection, the organized criminals have turned their attention to the cheaper, lesser taxed red diesel. The gangs have been developing increasingly sophisticated ways of stripping out the red dye, which marks it out as being illegal for use on the road it's called fuel laundering. Concealed in a barn on farmland, this footage shows a large criminal operation. 
A filtration system of pumps and bleaching agents remove the chemical markers and dyes from the rebated fuel. Its job, quite simply, to turn the red diesel into a clear white liquid. To the naked eye, it now looks perfectly legal and is ready to be transported across the country for sale to ordinary motorists. I wanted to track down where the fuel is being sold. I'd heard about so-called huckster sites, pop-up petrol stations which sell this cheap illegal fuel to ordinary motorists, willing to turn a blind eye to its origins. In a back street lane in Belfast city centre, I notice a small industrial yard. Tucked discreetly behind a pull-down shutter is a petrol pump. Taxi after taxi drives in and fills up. The following day, it's exactly the same. It doesn't look like any petrol station I've seen. The guy who does the filling up is very, very, very nervous, very suspicious. Always looks around to see who's there. But I'm hoping that I can have a chat with him. Maybe he'd be able to give me more information about illegal fuel. But having been warned about the kind of people involved in this industry, the only option is to film my approach secretly. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Listen, can you help me? The man tells me he doesn't work here. He's just covering. Is there any way I can speak to whoever? Yeah, so I know for a fact he's away with regards somewhere. Oh, okay. And he's not going to be back. He's tucked away for the weekend. Right. He's not going to be back. You're tucking him. So is this, this site here, right, is this like any kind of petrol station that you'd get on the mainland? Because you don't kind of get petrol stations like this. I don't know. That's the end. You need to speak to somebody else. Cause but you're acting like you, you like you, you, this is your first day at work. It's just your You're just covering. I'm just covering. Right. So it is. And the, the guy up on the, the Shankill Road listen, said, listen, too many but all I just want listen, to know. It's, it's not my, I'm, I've already told you three or three times, you need to come back and say somebody else is here. And you don't know anything about... I don't know anything, so, don't, so you need to call back. It was clear I wasn't going to get any useful information here. The only way for me to find out more about sites like this one was from those who were all too familiar with the criminal gangs. This is Northern Ireland's HMRC illegal fuels team. It's dangerous work, often requiring heavily armed specialist police units to escort them. Some jobs involve entering areas previously hostile to enforcement agencies of any kind and shutting down operations at every level of this criminal industry. But with all the backup in the world, in order to prove a crime has been committed in the first place, the officers sometimes have to go in alone. To find out more about illegal fuel in Northern Ireland and the pop-up petrol stations which sell it, we've been allowed to accompany the HMRC fuels team. They believe this fuel yard to be run by criminals. An undercover purchase takes place. Cheers, 20 quid, please. The signs outside promise the cheapest fuel in Belfast. Thanks, love. Cheers. Cheers. Within minutes, the fuel is tested. It's illegal and the site is immediately taken apart. It's one of 97 illegal pop-up petrol stations found in Northern Ireland in the last year. Some reportedly selling fuel at almost half the normal price, yet still making a very tidy profit. The following day I'm taken on another operation, 
and one which demonstrates just how profitable this crime can be. 86.9 pence a litre. Yeah, I mean, in, 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 in Belfast, diesel selling these days uh, on the garage forecourts for about 145 a yeah. litre. And uh, we have intelligence that taxi drivers have been uh, acquiring their diesel for, for under 90p a litre. Um, and there um, is 86.9. So far, Unlike most illegal huckster sites, this one's left a paper trail. Books of receipts for every transaction over the last year. This petrol station, if you can call it that, is taking in £22,000 a month, every month. That's big money. For a place like this, big money. Tests on the 10,000 litres of diesel found at the site should worry anybody putting this fuel into their tank. Oh, it's all yeah. cracked underneath at the bottom as yeah, well. Ab the whole absolutely. Cracked. That's just from the chemicals that have been in these fuels. There has been acid uh, as well, perhaps been used in this process, <laughs> or some other chemical yeah. which, is, um, which is affecting the test tube. After the tests confirm the fuel is illegal, the man working there is immediately arrested. As the officers prepare to dismantle the Huxter site, a customer turns up. Sorry? Here. I told my turn on here. I'm going to the mechanics. Go yeah, we have to get tested. His tank is dipped. He's been running on red. This guy's come to fill his car, just as he would have at a yeah. normal filling station. He's, he's got all the kids in the back of the car. Presumably, if that is running on red, which it looks like it is, you'll seize the car. Yes. That's the family car. Yes. To stop his car from being seized on the spot, the driver agrees to pay a £500 fine. Across the UK in the last year, customs have discovered 23 large-scale fuel laundering plants and raided 200 huckster sites like this one. But as fast as customs are shutting them down, another's ready to take its place. And Ulster's fuel criminals may have set their sights on a much bigger market just across the water. The people at the top know that there is a much larger market in the rest of the United Kingdom. There are over 55 million people to appeal to, and particularly in terms of fuel, whereas here there's less than 2 million people. Um, so, and, and of course, once it gets across uh, in the ferry or whatever transportation method th they use to get it to mainland GB, uh, it's much easier assimilated into the chain. Back across the water, and it's clear just how widespread this crime is becoming. If high prices are fueling the black market, it's ordinary motorists who are funding it. And enforcement agencies are finding illegal fuel being used in people's tanks. So you're saying you put some red in there previously? Yeah, that... about two, three weeks ago. There's only a gallon to keep it running because I right. did a clutch on it. This is the public face of fuel enforcement. Roadside stops and random tank dips. Today we're with Revenue and Customs in South Wales. Within a few hours, several motorists are caught with illegal red diesel in their tanks. I just cannot afford it. It's an absolute offence. So, yeah. Last year, more than 3,000 UK motorists were caught running their cars on illegal fuel. But Customs know that random roadside checks will only catch a fraction of those drivers prepared to break the law in this way. And the police are starting to see fuel theft taken to a whole new level. A closed petrol station on Birmingham's A34. A white tanker pulls into the forecourt. Two men in high-vis jackets place vacuum pipes into the underground tanks. In full view of passing traffic, this petrol station is about to be completely sucked dry of its fuel. We were out on patrol. We came off the M6 motorway and we were travelling along this dual carriageway, which is the A34, uh, heading towards Birmingham city centre. The Shell petrol station that's on the opposite side of the road to us. Um, we happened to see this white tanker 
on the forecourt with somebody stood on top of it as we drove past, believe it or believe it not. Yeah, all patrol, there's a fuel theft in progress at the service station just off to 7 uh, on the Warsaw Road. Garage of it shut. And as we pulled onto the forecourt, there was still a, a chap on top of the tanker, stood there filling up the petrol tanker from fuel that they were stealing from the underground tanks. As we pulled in, he obviously saw us in a marked police car and uh, decided to do a runner, so he literally leaped off the top of the tanker, believe it or believe it not, didn't injure himself, and then was on his toes running down the A34 towards Birmingham. As the officers chase him down the road, the diesel starts to pour out of the tanker, dangerously close to a live generator. Never seen anything like it in my life. Diesel running down the dual carriageway down the A34, and I'm talking about a small amount of diesel. I'm talking it looked like a water main had burst. As we got close to the petrol station, you could see it gushing out of the top of the tanker, running all down the side of it. It was running onto the generator, which was obviously hot. Thick, acrid smoke now fills the forecourt. By the time the officers return with one of the fuel thieves, the situation is threatening to get out of control. And when we were stood there with this diesel flowing out, not really knowing what to do, he was the one that volunteered to go into the, the smoke and the diesel and shut this thing down that was pumping out. In just six months, the white tanker gang sucked up a quarter of a million pounds worth of fuel from dozens of petrol stations across the country. The ringleader, Rupert Kamak, his two sidekicks, Colin Danby and Brendan Henry. Between them, the three received almost nine years in prison following a multi-force operation led by West Midlands CID. They knew what they were doing, they knew the petrol stations that they were going to have to target um, to get the, the value and the volume of commodity, the diesel that they'd got. It was all planned, that they'd, they'd know when deliveries were coming in, there's certain evidence to suggest they were fully aware of when deliveries were coming in, about six or seven o'clock in the morning, the tank that had been filled a number of hours early was totally empty. You're looking at the theft of something that's needed by the majority of the population. When somebody finds an opening in the market, it doesn't take long for other people to uh, sort of get involved, to realise what's going on. And I would think we'll be seeing a lot more of it. In January, the cost of fuel is set to rise by around four pence a litre. Now, for the ordinary motorists, every increase is another dent in the wallet. But for the criminals, every price hike at the pump represents an opportunity for them to maximise their illegal profit. Remember our first Huxter site in Belfast? Two weeks after we secretly filmed there, it was targeted by customs. Open up. The fuel they were selling was illegal. The site was shut down. But those fighting fuel crime know the battle is far from won. This Wednesday at 9, a panorama special on the trail of Britain's child beggars. From Oxford Street to palaces in Romania, we investigate the families behind the begging. Stay with us tonight on BBC One for Motorway Cops, or on BBC Two now, a new series with Dr Alice Roberts, revealing how your body tells the story of evolution, origins of us.